Hi there, Dr. Kalala here, your medical director. I wanted to first of all welcome you to the second trimester for our continuing education series. I wanted to take this opportunity to set the compass on some upcoming protocol and policy changes that will be affecting both you as providers as well as the EMS system. The details of all of these protocol and policy updates will be brought to you by our fantastic uh, EMS educators. So please feel free to ask them uh, any detailed questions that you may have. Um, the November 1st go live date will include the following protocols that I want to bring to your attention. One of them will be a stroke policy change. The second will be a destination policy uh, for EMS receiving hospitals. Third will be the use of transcutaneous pacing for symptomatic bradycardia. And the fourth will be the use of colometric capnography, both for BLS and ALS providers. And the last will be uh, the use of, uh, of MSCOM doing a paging for stroke and STEMI alerts. So let me just spend a few seconds on each of those to highlight the things that I think are important. First of all, for the stroke uh, protocol changes that are upcoming, the big uh, change will be the symptom onset. So we used to use three or four and a half hours as symptom onset. Now we're extending that to eight hours uh, to, uh, to uh, accommodate and address the advances in some of the uh, stroke care. Patients uh, that present with symptoms within eight hours uh, can benefit or may benefit, I should say, from some interventional procedures available at many stroke centers. So we are extending the window of time for a therapeutic uh, intervention to eight hours. The second piece that I wanted to highlight is the use of the last known well concept. Um, just as it sounds, last known well time essentially tries to um, assess if the patient's symptoms occurred within the last eight hours um, compared to what their baseline is. Sometimes I understand it's difficult and challenging to assess if this is a new finding or not, but the difficulty and your task will be trying to sort out uh, the time of onset of symptoms compared to when they were last known well. The other piece of this is just reinforcing the use of our Cincinnati Stroke Scale as the primary tool in which you would use to try to differentiate if this is stroke or any number of other similar presentations. Um, all of the other policy and protocol, I'm sorry, all the other protocol pieces of the uh, stroke protocol will be pretty straightforward and the instructors can walk you through that. The second issue that does pertain to the stroke policy, I'm sorry, stroke protocol, is our destination policy. Um, in the past, Milwaukee County EMS receiving hospitals didn't recognize stroke hospitals as one of their specialty resources. Um, with the understanding of the better outcomes from patients that go to stroke centers, we want to, of course, bring patients to where they will be best taken care of. So we have added a category uh, of stroke hospitals for our uh, specialty uh, hospitals, our destination hospitals. So just be sure to review and update yourself on which hospitals are stroke hospitals in which are not. Most of the hospitals within Milwaukee County, especially the central and northern part of the county, are all designated as uh, uh, stroke hospitals, so it really shouldn't impact your, de your destination very much. It may impact the southern part of the county, uh, but again, patients that have uh, onset of symptoms less than eight hours with a positive Cincinnati stroke scale should be transported to a stroke hospital. The next protocol uh, change will be the use of transcutaneous pacing for symptomatic uh, bradycardia. Um, essentially, what uh, we're introducing with the new ZOL monitor is the ability to, to be able to use transcutaneous pacing uh, as, a, um, as a, uh, a, an option for you to manage those heart failure patients, I'm sorry, those heart block patients. The way the protocol is written essentially has you uh, assess the electrocardiogram and see if this is a, a second degree type 2 or a complete heart block. In those patients, you should, pre you should preferentially move towards transcutaneous, transcutaneous pacing with them. Um, so the, again, the protocol will outline those. Folks that have 
uh, lesser blocks or that are um, that are not symptomatic can be managed through uh, atropine or your other standard uh, protocols. But just be aware that the pacing is going to be an option available for you. Understand that pacing is a painful procedure, so you want to make sure that you provide analgesia uh, for those patients. Next is the use of the colometric capnography device. So this is essentially uh, the a confirmation device that um, allows mostly BLS providers who are inserting a King airway to be able to immediately confirm placement of that airway device. Um, trying to emphasize the critical importance of proper tube position and the importance that we use this as our standard of care and practice. Uh, so the, 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 the way in which this will impact our EMS system is going to be twofold. One is um, any, any of the BLS providers who are inserting a King airway can immediately use the color metric device to confirm placement, and that will be expected. For ALS providers, the, color, the uh, color metric device can be used to confirm your airway, either in the tracheal tube or a, a King airway, primarily as a backup to your primary um, waveform device. So uh, oftentimes, the, uh, your standard way of confirming the airway uh, with the, um, the waveform capnography can sometimes fail for a number of reasons, vomit in the airway or, or other things. So this is one additional tool that you'll have at your disposal to confirm uh, correct tube placement. It is imperative to understand that any airway adjunct must be confirmed with a uh, uh, capnography device. Uh, that is the standard of care. The other things that you usually do, direct visualization, assessment of lung sounds, etc., those are all important secondary devices, but uh, our focus really is using capnography as the primary airway confirmation adjunct. The next um, uh, policy change that will occur is the process in which EMS Communication Center will notify our receiving hospitals in the conditions of stroke and uh, STEMI care. Um, so uh, the, the goal, as you understand, is to try to minimize the time from onset of symptoms until they can get um, definitive care for stroke and STEMI. So to that end, we want to do our part to try to minimize uh, that time. Um, so this will be incumbent on you uh, quickly assessing and recognizing uh, symptoms and then being able to do a notification process so that EMSCOM can, uh, can notify the receiving hospitals. Uh, it will require you using some specific terminology to make it clear in the communication chain that uh, your impression is you know, either stroke or STEMI. So let me give you two examples to illustrate the concept. So let's say, for example, you arrive on the scene of a patient who's having classic chest pain symptoms. You do your EKG within the first 10 minutes at the bedside, as our, as our policies uh, uh, outline. And you, you analyze the electrocardiogram, and your provider impression is a STEMI. So at that point, you should immediately notify EMSCOM with the following information. Alert them that you have a code STEMI alert what your anticipated hospital destination will be and what your estimated time of arrival will be. At that point, you don't have to provide a whole lot more information as you're probably pretty busy stabilizing the patient and getting everything uh, together, getting them packaged up and, and into, the, uh, into the rig. So the, the key of this is trying to give EMSCOM an early notification that you have the STEMI patient so that they can push that information forward to the receiving hospital as as a way to be able to, of course, as a way to be able to um, minimize their response time on the receiving end. Once you at a time where it's convenient, you will then engage EMSCOM as you normally do, uh, contacting them with more definitive information, treatment interventions, response, medical con uh, consultation if you need it, etc. So really, the tier is going to the, the 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 flow will be something like early early uh, recognition at the bedside, early notification to EMSCOM so that they can push the information forward, and then at a point where it is more convenient, you would provide your normal standard communication and workflow. So again, the goal is to minimize 
the uh, time that we can give hospitals that you're coming with a patient who's going to need some specialty services. Uh, the next scenario will be uh, in the setting of stroke. So let's say you respond to a patient, they have stroke symptoms, they have a positive Cincinnati stroke scale, and you've determined that their last known well time is less than eight hours. You also make a brief assessment whether or not they require any ALS uh, accompaniment or not. Um, um, so once you've determined, especially those first two factors, positive stroke scale, last known well time of less than eight hours, you would alert EMSCOM that you have a, a, a code stroke alert. Again, destination and ETA. EMSCOM will forward that information ahead of time. You do your stuff, you get the patient packaged up, you get them to uh, the hospital, and you'll be able to contact EMSCOM um, along the way as you ordinarily would to provide more detailed information. Again, the goal is trying to minimize the, inf minimize the time that it takes to notify the, the downstream receiving hospital. Um, we think that this is a good strategy to be able to um, have you quickly recognize symptoms and, and make an impression get the ball rolling on the uh, communication piece, and then follow up with your standard workflow um, right after that. So again, the goal is to be sort of as patient-centered as possible. Uh, so I, again, I wanted to emphasize that our go-live date is going to be November 1st. So uh, you'll get more information as that approaches, but again, go-live date first is November 1st. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, the, these uh, policy and protocol updates, please let me know or let one of the uh, EMS educators know and it will get back to me. And um, thanks again for all your hard work in the system. I appreciate it. Have a great day.